Hi everyone and welcome to this new video about steady state analysis. This is our example number two about RLC circuit and we will use in this example again node voltage analysis as we did in example number one. In this example we have again two resistors, one capacitor and one inductor, but this time we have a current source instead of a voltage source and the values of those components are shown here and the time in the IS which is the current source is shown in the time domain with 8 amperes amplitude. 1000 radians per second is the radian frequency and a minus 10 degrees is the phase orientation at this point. We would like to calculate the following. The steady state value of the voltage across the capacitor VC and steady state value of the uh, voltage across the inductor VL. Both in, of course, in time domain. Before I can start, as we did also in the previous videos, we like to convert all the components and all the sources in frequency domain. We carry out the calculations and then we come back and transform back to our time domain such that we have the required values as shown here. So I will start first determining the frequency domain uh, parameters, which are actually the reactances of the capacitor and the inductor, and also the polar representation of the source IS. So I will have the X of C, first one, will be 1 over omega C, which is 1 over omega is 1000 here, 10 to the power 3, which is shown actually here in the source, as you can see, this one. So we have the 10, 1000 times the capacitor value is 10 to the power minus 4, 100 microfarads. And this will result in 10 ohms. If you do the carry out the calculations for the reactance of the inductor, which is omega times L, it will be 10 to the power 3 times 6 millihenries will be 6 times 10 to the power minus 3. And this will give us 6 ohms. I will also have to determine the complex expression for the IS, the current source. IS will be just take over your amplitude 8 and you will have your phase of minus 10 degrees. And that will be also in units amperes. Remember, if you have a cosine as your reference signal, you can just copy your amplitude and your phase. If this is a sine, you'll have to add a minus 90 degrees here. So it will be minus 100 in this case. So before I can, of course, develop our uh, equations for this node analysis method, node voltage analysis, I will have to choose a node voltage, a no node, so I will have to determine a node. So in this case, I have two nodes here, but these are exactly the same. And I have also a node here, but we don't have a current flowing actually in different directions, it's actually the same branch. So this is actually not an interesting node. For this node, I will designate the name, so I will call it X. So I will have the following. I will have the Kirchhoff current law applied at point X. I will also designate the polarities. It will be clear how the current is flowing. So this one is the I1 for the R1, and this is for the capacitor IC. And we have also this current, which is flowing in through the R1 and the inductor. I will just call it I2 in this direction. It doesn't matter how you choose your polarities. If it is from the start, it is exactly the same, then you can do uh, you, can, you can carry out your calculation. For this, of course, for the capacitor and the inductor, it is handy to set your polarities for the current, current also in this direction. Otherwise, you have to have, take the minus sign of the end result. Okay, so let's move on. What is actually the situation here? So the IS, as you can see, will split in I1, in IS, and also in I2. So actually what we have in frequency domain, in vectors, will be IS is equal to I1 plus I capacitor plus I2. And what I also always want to do is I will like to express these currents in voltages and impedances, reactances or, uh, or resistance. So it will be also I1 will be uh, used uh, via the Ohm's law. So I will have the voltage across each component and also the resistive part or the reactive part of the impedance. So I will have the expression for I1, IC and I2 using Ohm's law as shown, because this is point X, it is exact same as the voltage VC, and I will like to calculate VC, because it is in the question, so I will keep it as VC instead of VX. So I have the following, I S will be VC again in vectors, divided by R1 plus VC divided by the reactance of the capacitor is, remember as minus J, it is, it is just a parameter for the complex plane, times Xc, we have calculated that, it's 10 ohms, and then plus, again, Vc, the same voltage at this point, 
but we have now R2 in series with this uh, inductor, which is XL. And because it's series, we can use summation, so it is R2 to plus JXL. Now I have calculated actually all of them. I know IS, of course, but I know R R1 also. But I have the XC and XL, and I have only a known in this equation V of C, which is actually uh, great because I can now determine from this equation x of c in time domain after I have determined the uh, frequency domain representation. So let's start first filling in the value. So this will be 8 phase minus 10 degrees. That's for the left part. The right pipe will be v of c divided by this one is 2 ohms. So this will be 2 ohms. And I will place it also in the phase notation because it's a phase orientation for the uh, Re resistor always zero degrees and this will be minus j will be of course if you have 10 ohms will be 10 phase minus 90 degrees this is for the pole representation so i will have v of c divided by 10 phase minus 90 degrees i will make it clear okay and then vc divided by which is 8 here plus j6 now i have to do some little bit more work here i have to calculate the amplitude and also the phase for this expression which is done as, as follows so i have the 8 plus j6 which is 8 squared plus 6 squared and then the arc tangent for the phase of 6 divided by 8 which is if you do the math correctly, this will exactly 10, and the phase will be very close to 37 degrees. So 8 plus J6, which is in the rectangular representation, representation will give you in the polar representation 10 phase 37 degrees. And I will substitute this one here, and I will continue actually the, the calculations, and I will carry out, uh, uh, divide out actually the amplitudes and also the phases such that I have, so I have get rid of this um, a fraction. So I have the following. I will do that in blue to make sure that this noticeable. So I have 8 minus 10 degrees, which is equal to 1 over 2 Vc phase 0 degrees plus 1 over 10 Vc. And I do 0 degrees minus minus 90 degrees will be plus 90 degrees. So it's plus 90. And I have plus 1 over 10 which is actually this term is actually here so you can just replace it it's again 1 over 10 times the vc so i will place it also vc but this time it, the phase will be also 0 degrees minus 37 degrees will be minus 37 degrees okay so the next step is actually we have all uh, representation here is shown here in uh, polar representation what I want is I would like to express all those terms here in rectangular representation because then I can add them up I will leave the left side as it is but I would like to uh, reduce these all such that I have the real part and the imaginary part together I cannot add them now in the polar representation but in re rectangular representation I can do that very easily so what I have is the following I have the 8 phase minus 10 degrees just at the left side, I don't bother with that. And for the right side, if you do the math again using the sine and the cosine function, etc., you will have for the left, for the right side, you will have VC with its its imaginary part will be 0 0.564 plus J 0 0.177. That's just addition of the, all the real parts and all the imaginary part of these three terms. So what you have in, in total then, you will now convert this also in the polar representation. And you have the following. I will still keep the left side as it is. So again, you use what, you, what I did here can also be applied here. And then you can use the amplitude and the phase. It will result in 0. 0.591 phase 70 degrees is this actually the 
for that. And we see now in vector form or the uh, Bayesian notation will be 8 phase minus 10 degrees divided by 0 0.591 phase 17 degrees. Now, this is how do you calculate this expression? How do you reduce this? You divide the magnitudes and you subtract the phases. So you have 8 divided by 0 0.591 and the phase will be minus 10 minus 17. So it will be, in this case, if you do the math correctly, you will have 13.54 and phase minus 27 degrees, of course, in volts. This is just the representation in the polar form. I would like to convert this to time domain. So I will do that also. So in time domain, I will make it clear in time domain for V of C in time, it is exactly looking at the amplitude. So we do actually the reverse action of what we did for the IS from a time domain. We moved from a time domain to the polar representation. Now I have to move from the polar representation to the time domain. So I will look at the amplitude, which is 30 point, so 13 point 54, it will be cosine again, the same frequency, which is given actually in the question, it will be 1000, so 1000, it will be this, 1000 T, and the phase will be 20, minus 27 degrees, and it will be in volts. So again, you have for sure, that's just a template, for sure the cosine, and for sure the 1000 T, but this, the phase here and the amplitude here can be just uh, read from the expression from the polar expression of the VC. So actually we are done now for question A. This is actually for question A, what we did do it now. And of course we need this equation also for question B. So we have now the question A done. So this is actually for, let me write down this for question A. Let's move now for to question B. For question B, I have to determine the voltage across the inductor. VL. What can I do for that? Now, if you look at the circuit, we now know the voltage at this point, or that point, that doesn't matter. If I know this, the voltage at this point, it means actually that this voltage will be supplied also, or will be applied also to this element and this element. So if I now use voltage divider rule here, I can say the voltage across this element is the voltage at this point times the re reactance of this element divided by the total impedance. So this is actually the voltage divider rule. So I have the following. I have the VL, of course all in the vector and uh, complex plane, will be the JXL divided by the total impedance will be R2 plus JXL times the, uh, the voltage at that point. So if I now substitute the values, it will be J6 divided by 8 plus J6 times, and this was already given in the phasor notation, so it will be 13.54 phase minus 27 degrees. Now, what I can do here is just convert this also in the polar representation, also this one also in the polar representation, that will be handy for division and some multiplication. So I will do that also. This, this will be 6 phase 90 degrees. This one will be 10. We have done this, of course, before. It will be 10 and a phase 37 degrees. And you will just copy the other value, which is just the voltage of VC. Now, if you now just multiply and divide all those terms, so you, what you do is actually the 6 times 30.54 divided by 10, which is actually your amplitude. So that will result in 8.12. And your phase will be 90 degrees plus minus 27 minus 37. So that will actually the situation for this example. And this, that will, this will result in 36. So again, I will uh, make it clear. So the magnitude magnitude will be 6 times 30.54 divided by 10 which is 8.12 and the phase 
I will make it in green and the face will be 90 degrees plus minus 27 degrees because that's just multiplication and then minus 37 degrees which is 36 degrees and that's actually for uh, this value so that is actually v of l also in volts i'm now very close to the representation in time domain because in time domain I just have to look at the amplitude and the phase. Now, of course, I use for I use this template, that invariant template. It's just a template, cosine 1000 t, etc. Now here I have to place the amplitude, which is 8.12, just the amplitude. And here I will place the phase. What is the phase here? Plus 36, plus 36. And that's actually the whole business. And of course, in volts as a unit. So this is actually the for example number two about the RLC circuit in steady state condition and we use Weser's complex numbers converting to the uh, time domain after we have done the calculations. See you next time and take care.